Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Today's gonna be kind of a garden update, a garden chat, talking a little bit about our climate and how different it is from what so many of you do. So we'll see what happens. Why don't you come along and let's go get in the garden. Well, a lot has been going on out here. We had freezes up until a week ago, and today is June 23rd. So almost literally on the 21st, we went into summer very quickly. It's getting hot. It's in the 90s, sun shining, and the sun here is brutal. We live in the high desert. We're at about 5,200 feet in elevation. And to put that in perspective, we are almost at one mile high elevation. So the sun is very intense. You'll almost always see me out here with a hat on. And a lot of times I even have long sleeves because it the sun just is brutal. So we went from basically not even spring. It was more of a early spring and then we had a little bit of winter. We had down to 23 degrees at the beginning of June and then we had two light freezes after that. And fortunately this almost all of it survived. I lost a couple of small seedling tomatoes and cucumbers. But considering the weather <laughs> that's not bad. So you can see things are coming along and I have almost everything planted. I'm going to fill in with some more flowers here and there, but the vegetables are in the ground. They're doing well. These two beds have been seeded. And they have a few things popping up, but not enough. I've, over there, I've got one little pinto bean that's going to be green beans that just popped up really quick. This one, that looks like some okra, I think. And I've got just a couple of charred seedlings and kale that are just coming up and I they've taken forever so I don't know if it was because of the cold weather or what but they are I'm finally seeing little bits of green in there that over there is tomatoes and those I'm gonna trellis once they get a little larger right now they're too small but I have put these posts in and I'm going to run twine through those and trellis those. But all among them, I've planted pinto beans. Again, right out of the grocery store. They are the best green beans. It's what I grew up with. And I've planted other beans here and they just don't do as well. Maybe it's our climate. I don't know. But you can see... They are just really doing well. And this is all an experiment this year because, and Mrs. Lori at Whipperwell Holler gave me the idea, but our climate is so dry and the water needs, and I'm today I'll be putting mulch down, that I'm hoping that maybe interplanting like this is going to give more protection from er evaporation and a little bit of shade so that maybe that will help a little bit because we really have a problem with that. The evaporation, the wind, the heat, it, it's hard to keep plants hydrated. So we're going to try that and see how it works. And I'm really hoping that I get a lot of green beans and tomatoes and other things from it. 
I've done the same thing over here in front of these tomatoes, but this is gonna be red beans. And in these pots, I've planted tomatoes, but I've also planted a dwarf okra. So again, I'm gonna see how putting them together helps. Over here, I've let my asparagus, I've decided it's time to just let it go to fronds and start building energy for next year because it really didn't do much this year. I got a little bit, but not much. Tomatoes here, these were all in walls of water like this, and they've all done wonderful. But I'm going to take those last two off here today. And I think I'm gonna take the one off down there also because I had heard you could leave them on all season and but I I think it's gonna be better if I take them off. So those are coming off and maybe we'll see how to do it. This chard came from last year. It overwintered. I never knew it was biennial and that it would keep coming back and yes it's going to go to seed and i'll collect the seed but for now i'm eating off this until my other chard comes up and gets going and i have harvested a lot and i've shared it with neighbors it's really good so that's all doing well over here is the potatoes cabbage. I've got some kale in there. I planted beets. I have not been able to succeed with beets and I don't know what's going on but we'll see if these come up. I'm starting to doubt it. Some broccoli but we'll see about that too. My artichoke's doing well and I've got some pole beans back there that are just coming up. All of these squash, these are all different winter squash. Well, these are delicata and those are butternut winter squash that I got from Azure Standard. They survived the freezing, although they did get a few frost burn leaves, but they're coming back really well. I am so happy with them. So again, I'm experimenting by putting these in these grow bags. We're gonna see how that does. Onions are doing well. I lost a couple of the little pumpkins to the freeze, but I've still got four of those. All the other squash are doing great, and I planted watermelon. I lost, well, they were too tiny, but uh, cantaloupes, I planted seeds there. But I have yellow crookneck squash and zucchini that are coming up. And here I've got sugar snap peas and I have shelling peas. And this, I've, I have a dear friend that lives here in the valley. She's 85 years old and makes my energy level look like nothing. She's been growing her own vegetables here for over 30 years. And she's been giving me some tips and tricks. This is one. She is using tomato cages to trellis her peas. They look incredible. And I had some, so I'm putting them to use here and I really think it's gonna do well. I may have to add more, we'll see. So those are doing great. My carrots, I have radish. That's all looking great. The peppers, they're, they're surviving. <laughs> this crazy weather I think has been terrible for them. They got a little frost burned. In fact, there's some of the damage there. But we'll see how they do. I lost one of my jalapenos and you can't seem to find jalapeno plants at the nurseries. Everybody's out of them. I don't know why this year, because I've always been able to before. I stuck a tomato in there. I have 32 tomato plants. <laughs> so I'm really hoping I get a good harvest. And between the birds and the insects and maybe keeping the deer out with the deer netting. I'm doing everything I can this year to try and save my vegetables. I'll share some, but 
the last few years has been terrible. Grasshoppers, you name it. And now we've been told that the Mormon crickets are on the move. They're probably 15 miles away from us. They can travel, I guess, a couple of miles a day, I believe. And they will eat everything in their path, everything. They, they, they'll eat each other, they will eat animals, anything they can find. It's, it's, it's always something here. And that's part of living in Nevada and in the high desert. We just really have some unique things here that there's, they have them in some other states too, but most of the country doesn't deal with this stuff. And plus the very short crowing season. So <sighs> that's okay. You just keep learning and growing and doing more. So my raspberries are just doing really great. I am getting a whole lot of blooms for the first time on these things. I don't know how well you can see. So I'm really excited for that. Again, I'm going to have to protect them from the birds especially. But that's okay. I'll just keep going. I've got some spinach and I reseeded some more because not all of it came up. And then I've got some lettuce there. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Again, these are still pretty small, but you gotta understand our growing season really doesn't start till the very end of May. And you can get things in a little early if you've got good protection for them. But because of our last frost date, we really have to plant much later than most of you who are finishing up a lot of your gardens and we're just getting started. So I'll give you some gardening updates while everybody else is taking some time off from the heat. Over here, I just planted two honeyberry bushes. And again, this was an idea from my friend. She seems to have tons of these berries off of just small bushes. This variety is supposed to get pretty large. They're honeyberries. I believe they're part of the honeysuckle family. And they produce, they reminded me of blueberries a little in looks, although they're more oblong shaped. And a little bit in taste. But they were really good. Heavy producers. And they're very high in antioxidants. Higher than blueberries is what I understand. So I'm really excited. But I had to get two for pollination, two different varieties. So I got Taka and Tana, and I'm hoping they bloom at the same time. So we'll, we'll have to see on that. And I got that whole dug very easy. They were one gallon pots, no problem. Got it in the ground. And then I started digging this hole. And I'll show you a picture of what I found in that hole just below the surface. And there's what it, well, all of those rocks came out of that hole. That one, that tried me pretty hard. These needed to be spaced certain distance, so I needed to have it there. So I tried digging another hole on the other side of it, thinking, okay, I'll just change it and come over here. And I don't know if you can see, well, not really well. This hole is about two and a half feet across. And within seven, eight inches of the surface is this big old rock. So both places I chose to dig had a big old rock. This one I'm still working on because it's coming out but I'll let Brian probably help me with that one or I'll just keep chipping away at 
the dirt around it because this clay dries hard like a rock and it just cements these things in. You can see these big clumps that came out of there. They, it's hard. So it's, it's hard work getting them out, <laughs> but that thing was amazing. And I'll show you a series of pictures I took of how I got it out of that hole using nothing but simple things and ideas. So that was a big project this week. My herbs over here are doing wonderful. In fact, I need to cut this lemon balm and probably dry some for tea and cut some oregano and also some from the garden because it's just doing really well. My little peach tree has not a ton of peaches this year, but it's got a number of them. And so far they're doing okay, but I just noticed that the birds are ignoring my mylar ribbons. And so I'm gonna be working on that. I have some, I, I don't want to have to net this tree. It, it would be difficult, but I do have some little bags on order that I'm gonna try. So I don't know if you can see all those back in there. So I'm gonna try putting the little bags on it to keep the birds, the deer, antelope, all the other critters from being able to easily eat these things. So gonna see how that does too, another experiment. My grapevines got burnt by the freeze also. Maybe you can see some of the I still have to finish pruning these. I've done some, but again, the, it's just one thing after another keeps happening. And I just have to deal with whatever is most important at the time. But they're mostly doing well. And I've got a number of grape clusters forming. And so I'm hoping that I can get those taken care of. I also need to put new wire around them because I've got to keep the animals out. They really want anything that's green because there isn't a whole lot of green out here. But my little flower bed here is just looking gorgeous and I'm, I love walking out and seeing this from my front porch. My Just Joey Rose, it smells so good and it's just blooming like crazy this year. This always makes me happy told you earlier that I was going to take these walls of water off and you might think how do you do it because it's basically just one plastic ring of tubes that you fill with water and they insulate and protect your plants during the early season but now it's time for these to come off so I just open it up as wide as I can Grab hold of it and lift off. And it's heavy because it's full of water. And now I need to put a cage around this and it's eroded some of the, the dirt from around the roots. So I'm gonna fill that in. But it gave protection for probably a month and a half now when otherwise I wouldn't have been able to plant. And then I'm gonna do it also to this one. So I'm gonna lay that down carefully.
and the same thing there. So again, the plants survived, they did well. But again, I see, I don't know if you can see, let me change this. Because you're watering these from the top, it looks like it washed away the dirt from the top of that. So I'm gonna be putting more in there. Lots of purslane that was in there protected. I will leave some purslane. I do pull a lot of it. Purslane is a weed, but it's also really good for you. I like to put it in stir fries. You can put it in salads. And I don't use chemicals in here, so it's safe to eat it. But they're fleshy little oval leaves and kind of, um, I'm not sure how to describe the taste. I like them. I, I don't eat them in large amounts, but they are good to add in a salad and they are good to put in a stir fry with other vegetables and they're really good for you. So I'm going to get busy and I'm going to get some soil put around the bottoms of these and get them caged up so that they will stand up and you can see this one I need to put dirt to this one also had a wall of water so that's one disadvantage but that's a small one considering the extra time that you can get to grow because you compare these tomatoes with those tomatoes so it's worth doing it but yeah i need to take them off now So this is about three hours of work this morning before it gets too hot. It's already around 90 today. Summer hit really fast, so it's hot. But not too hot, but it's hot to be working out in it in the sun. So I got my tomatoes staked up, got cages around them, the walls of water off. I got some of this mulch down. This is, a, it's a straw that's shredded and it has a tacking agent in it. Oh, there's a snake in my garden right there. I hope you're a good one. Well, it's not a rattlesnake. I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of grayish color. That's the second one this week like that I've seen. Hmm. So, <laughs> Just eat the bugs, eat the rodents. I'm good. It's always something here. But this straw has a tacking agent in it and it normally holds up really well, but I put some down in some areas when I first planted the seeds and some of these things. It, it did not hold up to 30 plus mile an hour winds. <laughs> But normally, you put it down, you wet it down, and it stays pretty well. And you don't have to do real heavy. I'm going to add some more, but I have to get another bag of it. And that's called easy mulch, I think. But it, it really works well. So I got that done. I also got it done all over there. and over here so a good amount of work done i'm gonna finish up and go inside for the hot part of the day because it and do some bookkeeping work because it's just too hot to be out here working in the sun so thanks for watching god bless and we'll talk soon